Hello and welcome to Met Public Radio Station, History on the Go. In this segment, we will talk about Native American life, how they lived, and the struggles that they endured. We have a songwriter who got inspired to transmit a message to the youth. Next up, we have a special feature where a Native American talks about what his life about his life as a young child and have a story related to the main character of a book who also lived on a reservation in the U.S. Blood spilled on our sacred grounds, leaving an unwanted stain where mighty warriors once made a stand. We never could walk hand in hand. When they lived by so much greed, we watched our people fall. Thousands must bleed. We stand. All we could do is try and the heavens cried on the trail of tears. This poem written by Spirit Wind One is about the harsh course that the Native Americans took to enter in the reservation. Today we are on the Native American reservation in the northwestern United States. Native Americans at the time when Andrew Jackson was president and still today were really treated badly. The different tribes like the Cherokee and Apache were forced to leave their homes, which were either in the southeast or east of the United States. The American government wanted them to move so that the white settlers could have more land to live. The tribe would take the daunting journey, which could be as long as 800 miles and up to one year long, until they arrived at their reservation, much like a third world country. The Native Americans died because of terrible diseases that the Europeans brought, such as malaria and yellow fever. Many books, poems, and songs have been written to tell people about life on the Native American reservation and on the Trail of Tears journey. Listen to Kanti's We Stand Alone based on a poem and the Heavens Cry Trail of Tears. She might look at them and say, What men do? Ghost tanks, Trail of Tears, five million beers a year. Heaven on earth is what I need, but I feel I need hell every time I breathe. The point of life on the other side, what you hear? A bunch of nonsense, only my ear, rich man, poor man. We all gotta pay, got freedom, man, you feel the truth on my way. Not being able to be yourself, not being able to have success. Love is fair, life is fair, but the guys run the excuse to kill yourself. You need to confront yourself before your enemies. Elementary kid, you can be whatever you want to be. His inspiration to write the song. So Conti, how did you get the motivation to write the song? After reading the poem, I really wanted to use my talent of writing songs not just to write another song, but to transmit a message through music. I kept my mind in feelings and powerful words that were used in the poem while I was writing. The emotions and pain that I felt listening to this, the poem were incorporated while writing the piece. I felt that in writing this song, I could express the journey in more fluent and understandable way. A way that all people young and all people could enjoy. I wrote rap for a specific reason. I wanted the youth to connect to this and imagine what happened with the ancestors. I really hope that awareness will spread and people, especially Americans, will be able to feel emotions cried out by the innocent Native American. Conti has inspired many people to learn and seek information about this topic. Maya, who grew up on a Native American reservation, tells us about her experiences on the res. Being a Native American is bad, but being a poor Native American is worse. Maya says that she can relate to the characters in the book, The Absolutely True Story of a Part-Time Indian. In this book, the main character, Arnold, deals with many problems being a Native American. He faces racial discrimination and many other downsides because he is a poor Native American. Arnold had to deal with white people in school degrading him and looking at the negative aspects of his life. I was living on a Native American reservation for most of my life. 
The area was small, my house was tiny and broken up, like the old houses you see in impoverished neighborhoods today. I went to school on the reservation. The education was poor. I learned more things from my father than I ever did in the 15-year-old books passed on from generation to generation. Family was important to me. They're the only people that I could rely on. The white people did not really pay much attention to me. And when they did, it was always something negative. I was never given the opportunities that the whites had. No nice homes with chandeliers or fancy cars for the family to fit in. There was never anything really to look forward to. School, home, school, home again. The res was like a third world country. Small communities packed with Native Americans. A school, grocery, recreational area, and a park. We were forced to become Americanized, changing our religion, changing our dress code, and being forced to go to school by the police. Our past was taken, and we had to try to hope for the better future, says Maya. When I think of a reservation, I think of a grassland filled with old homes, little water, and few amenities. Now it really sounds like a third world country that is underdeveloped and impoverished. Thank you for listening. On behalf of our broadcasting team and 93.5 FM and the Met Public Radio Station, we hope to see you soon on History on the Go. To read more of the poem and song, click on the links below.